Hi guys, here's your video going over ellipses day one. So after you are done graphing this video, you should be able to graph an ellipse. So just like with parabolas, our video on parabolas, your ellipse has an official definition. So here is your definition of the ellipse. It is the set of all points such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points remains constant. So your two fixed points, I have this one right here and this one right here. Each one of them is a focus. Since we have two of them, it is a plural for focus is foci. And what this definition means is if I take this red line plus this blue line, that would be the same as if I were to take, let's say this green line plus this pink line. So essentially this red and blue line, say this point right here, can actually travel along this circle like this with that red and the blue traveling with it. And the sum of those two distances is going to remain the same. Now it's kind of difficult to explain this without an animation, so I did the best I could. Um, just like with parabolas, we have a ton of formulas and information that we're going to use. Ellipses, you can have ellipses that are horizontal. Those look like footballs, so an ellipse like that or you can have an ellipse that is vertical, so it looks like an egg. Um, and then the rest of the pieces will kind of go through as we do the examples. So first example, graphing the ellipse. So in order to determine what kind of major axis you're going to have, you need to look at what's in the denominator. So your major axis is the longer portion of your ellipse. Now I'm gonna look at where my bigger number is. If my bigger number is underneath the X, that means I'm going to have a horizontal major axis. If my bigger number was underneath the Y, you would have a vertical major axis. Um, from here, I'm going to find my center. So I'm gonna go back to these formulas over here. Um, here's your standard form formulas for ellipses. If you'll notice within those parentheses, we still have H and K, just like we did with parabolas. And with parabolas, it is called the vertex for ellipses, it is called the center. So I'm gonna take my x coordinate of the center from my x parenthesis, y coordinate of my center from my y parenthesis. But with this particular problem, I don't even have parentheses in my numerator. So that means my center is at zero, zero. It's at the origin. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot my center. And there we go. So your major axis is a horizontal major axis. Your vertices are gonna be two points that are at the end of your major axis. So if I am moving horizontally, if I'm moving horizontally, you gotta ask yourself, is I'm am I changing my X coordinates or my Y coordinates? Well, as I move horizontally, my X coordinates are going to change. So my Y coordinates and my vertices are actually going to be the same as my Y coordinate of the center. It's the X coordinate that we are going to adjust. Now for your vertices, it is going to be plus or minus A to be able to figure out what these two values are. Now, what is A? Well, a squared is always your bigger number, so a squared in this case is 36, and when I say bigger number, I mean bigger denominator. And then b squared is your smaller denominator, which in this case is 9. So if a squared is 36, that means a equals plus or minus 6, and if b squared is 9, that means b equals plus or minus 3. So for my x-coordinates of my vertex, or my vertices, I'm gonna do plus or minus a from this value. So I'm gonna take zero plus six, that gives me six. Zero minus six gives me negative six. And that's where your two vertices are. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph those. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there are my two vertices. Now, when I ask for major axis, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the length of the major axis. So the length of the major axis is the distance between those two blue points. So it was six units in both directions, so that means the length of the major axis is going to be 12 units. Another way to think of your major axis length is it's going to be two times A, so two times six gives us 12 units. 
Now, since we used A for the vertices and the endpoints of the major, that means B is used for the endpoints of the minor. So since I went horizontally for my major axis, that means I'm going to move vertically for my minor axis. And B is three, so from my center, I'm gonna go up three and down three. And then this distance, represents the length of the minor axis. So I went up three and down three, so my minor axis is six units. And that is two times B. Now the last thing we're going to find is the foci. Now the foci is going to be plus or minus so finding the foci is very similar to finding the vertices. You're just using a value C instead of the value A. Your foci also lies along the major axis, and since I have a horizontal major axis, that means these y-coordinates are not changing, just like your y-coordinates of the vertices did not change from the center. Now, I say plus or minus C, but what the heck is C? So if I look back over here, I have this formula, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. That's what I'm going to use to calculate the value of c. So I have c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So c squared equals 27. I'm gonna square root, so c equals plus or minus approximately 5.2. We'll round to one decimal place for the sake of simplicity. And then for my foci, it's plus or minus c. So once again, I'm looking back at this value of my center that I'm changing, and I'm gonna do plus or minus 5.2. So zero plus 5.2 gives me 5.2. Zero minus 5.2 gives me negative 5.2. And then I'm gonna graph those. So one, two, three, four, five point two. It's pretty close to your vertices. Um, but those two points represent your foci. And then I can connect my blue points on the outside, make it nice and curvy, and you have your ellipse. So this one is longer horizontally, so it kind of looks like a football. Or it looks like Hey Arnold, if you watch that show. All right, let's do another one. For this one, I'm going to look at my bigger number again to figure out what kind of major axis I have. So bigger number is underneath the Y, so that means I'm going to have a vertical major axis. Now this time, I do actually have numbers in my parentheses. So my center, my X coordinate of the center is gonna come from the X parentheses, and of course we're gonna take the opposite, just like we did with parabolas, because it's X minus H, so X minus four means that H is four. And then for this one, my y is going to be negative one. So I'm gonna plot my center for negative one. And since I have a vertical major axis, I'm moving vertically. Now, if I am moving vertically, am I changing my x values or my y values? You're changing your y values. So that means my x values for my vertices as well as my foci are all going to stay the same because those all lie on the major axis. It is this y value that I'm going to adjust. And once again, vertices is gonna be plus or minus a. So I'm gonna find my um, a's and b's. So I have a squared equals 64. a squared is always your bigger number for ellipses. So a is plus or minus eight b squared is 25, so b is plus or minus 5. So I'm going to use this point, the negative 1, and I'm going to add 8 and subtract 8, because that was my a. So negative 1 plus 8 gives me 7, negative 1 minus 8 gives me negative 9. So I can go ahead and plot those points. There's my negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's my 7. And since I had a vertical major axis, that means my minor axis is horizontal, and we use B for the minor axis. So I'm going to move horizontally five units in both directions from my center. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The length of my major axis is going to be 16 units. So it's the length of my longer side of the ellipse and the length of my minor axis is going to be 10 units. 
And again, the 16 is also 2 times A, and then your 10 is 2 times B. And then for my foci, I want to do plus or minus C. So I have C squared equals A squared minus B squared, which gives us 39. And square root of 39 is approximately plus or minus 6.2. So just like with my vertices, I'm going to use this y-coordinate of my center, and I'm going to add and subtract c from that value, and that's gonna give me where each focus is. So negative one plus 6.2 gives me 5.2. Negative one minus 6.2 gives me negative 7.2. And those are my two points that I need to plot. So 4, 5.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.2. And I have graphed each focus. Now I can connect these blue dots, my endpoints of my major, and my endpoints of my minor axes. Make it nice and curvy. And you have the ellipse. All right, so sometimes your equations are not actually in the standard form, so we need to adjust them first before we can do anything else with the problem. Um, so before we can graph anything, we need it in standard form first. So in order to get it in standard form, you're going to use a process called completing the square, similar to what we did with parabolas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this equation and rearrange it. So I'm putting my x's together and my y's together. And since I'm trying to get it into standard form, I also want to take this constant and move it to the other side because I only want my variables on one side and I want my number on the other. But when I take my 34 and move it to the other side, I need to do it via subtraction. So this becomes a negative 34 on the right hand side. Now anytime you have numbers in front of your x squared and your y squared, you need to factor them out. So I'm gonna take out a four from my x terms, so that gives me four times x squared plus two x, and then I'm gonna go ahead and insert my first square for the completing of the square. I'm gonna do the same thing with my y's, except I'm gonna factor out a six. So I have y squared minus six y, and then I'm gonna insert my second square equals negative 34. Now, of course, anytime you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other, otherwise your equation is no longer balanced. So since I inserted these squares on my left side, I'm gonna have to put them on the right side as well. But one thing to pay attention to is the fact that these numbers are hanging out in front of your parentheses. So if they have numbers in front of my parentheses, that means those same numbers also need to be in front of the boxes that I am adding to the right hand side. And then from there, we're gonna do the process of completing the square. I'm gonna take half of this middle term and square it. So half of two is one, one squared is one. So that means in my first square on both sides is gonna be one. For my second square, I'm gonna take half of negative six, which is negative three. That squared is nine. So in my second squared is going to be nine. And then from here, we're just working through our algebraic scales of simplifying. This I want to factor, so two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2 are 1 and 1. So that's going to leave me with x plus 1 times another x plus 1, which is also known as x plus 1 squared. For this one, I want to find two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6. That is going to be negative 3 and negative 3. So I have y minus 3 quantity squared. And then on my right hand side, when I combine like terms, I have negative 34 plus 4 plus 54, and that is going to give you 24. All right, we're almost there. Now I'm going to go back to my previous example to look at the standard form again. So if I look at this standard form again, a couple things you should notice. We always had fractions, right? I had those denominators that helped me find A's and B's. And then your equation always equals 1. So that's something we still need to create with this particular problem. Because right now I don't have fractions, and right now my equation is equal to 24. 
So to get it equal to 1, I want to divide by 24. And of course, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And if you'll notice, we're starting to get our fractions. So I have my equals 1, and then I just need to reduce. So 4 goes into 24 six times. So this becomes x plus 1 squared over 6, plus 6 goes into 24 four times. So that gives me y minus 3 squared over 4. And this right here is now in standard form, which means we could figure out your major axis. This one would have a horizontal major axis since my bigger number is underneath the x. You could figure out your vertices, your foci, length of the major, length of the minor, and then you could create the graph. Um, but yeah, that's it. All right, this concludes your video on ellipses day one, graphing ellipses.